despise the brothers. I don't respect the brothers at all. I'll be escorted by the right honorable David Davis, MP, former deputy leader of the Conservative Party. I don't know why he would do that if he thought I was the kind of man you're clearly implying that I am. David Davis is one of the great parliamentarians uh, of today and this age. Uh, and I'll be taking my seat in the House of Commons and speaking for the people of Rochdale. That's what I was elected to do. And what is your message also to Kirstar? My message to Keir Starmer is that the skids are under you uh, in scores of Labour seats up and down the country because you've lost the trust, you've lost the confidence Absolutely. of millions of your traditional loyal voters. <laughs> have alleged intimidation. The Prime Minister referenced that intimidation in his address. You keep respect. referring to the Prime Minister as if that's supposed to impress me. The Prime Minister is a, the, the Prime Minister is a rather diminutive, diminished and degraded politician. He made a party political statement. I I, I don't care about Rishi Sunak's attitude. What I care about is that the returning officer a man of unimpeachable integrity, I'm sure you'll agree, declared it a free and fair election and me as the winner. And Rishi Sunak as one of the crushed two big parties in the state. Yeah. That's all that matters to me. Are you going to keep repeating the same questions to me? Because I have other people to talk to. So let's make this the last one, shall we? We've got a party. See you later. We've got a party. Allegations of intimidation. Allegations that your supporters intimidated other candidates. That's five times you've said that. The returning officer declared it last night. You were there as a free and fair election, and me as the winner. And the well, you're going to have to. You're going to have to just suck it up. I Sorry. won the election. Yeah. And you can see some of the atmosphere that I think the people of Rochdale have experienced themselves during this by are united. Uh, are united. Uh, uh, and the dog whistle politics from our establishment politicians. And you can see the feeble atmosphere and the anger uh, in this room about an hour before uh, rallying the victory party for George Galloway. We love George. 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 We love with these dog whistle, disgusting dog whistle politics. We've heard from them and this team. It's not impartial. I think you've got the history of the flavour of the politics right now in Rochdale. This bureaucracy has been witnessing for the last four years. How did you explain the strategy of your vision? How did you explain the strategy of your vision? You just point off paper, right? You're not going off anything You're going off what you're told. Nothing else. And you, now you're walking off because you don't see the truth. We will do this. Can I, can I just regroup for a second? Yeah. You're intimidated by my supporters. You that should be. <laughs> 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 Yeah. I mean, he would say that, wouldn't he? Just 
like Rishi Sunak would say, I got 10,000 votes more than his candidate got. You've got to say something. But you know in future that Labour will put in more of a campaign. Are you? So you keep telling me. Labour's done. So you keep telling me. Are you a Labour press officer? <laughs> I think he is. Labour's done. I will fight. We will put you up against But you accept this was an unusual event. In the well, sense that the main when you asked me that very question just a few hours ago, in the early hours of this morning, I gave you my answer. I don't have a different answer now. I'm not sure of the wisdom. Okay, you took me, and you're here to celebrate your victory tonight yeah. with your support. Yeah, and you gate crashed it. Welcome. Well, we welcome. welcome here. Are we yeah, welcome here? You weren't welcome to come and try and invalidate the election. The election's over and I won it. You're going to have to get used to that. I assure you that's not what I'm here to do. I'm here to find out what your mandate is. You know, you've talked about the thumbling majority, but it was such a low turnout. It wasn't and such a low Why do you say that? It's exactly the same turnout as in the last by-election. It was higher than most by-elections. Your premise is false. Can you confidently say that you represent all of the people? Of course I don't. I represent the people who voted for me, and I'll try to do my best for all the others. Your main message was to try and achieve a ceasefire in Gaza. It wasn't my main message. That's another false premise. All of your literature. It's no, and... not all of my literature. If you've looked at all of my literature, you know that that premise is false. It was a very strong part of your campaign. A strong part of my campaign. Genocide usually is something that occupies people's interest. There ought to, at least. Have you made promises to Rochdale that you can't keep? I'm really not sure why, what I'm doing here. This is my victory party. What do you mean, promises I can't keep? Why don't you judge whether I kept them at the end of my term? This isn't really a huge victory for you if you consider that Labour really worked hard. <laughs> 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 Are you here as a Labour press officer? No, I'm not. Throw them out. Throw them out. Why are you them them shilling out. for them? But it's, it's not the same. You're shilling it for Keir Starmer. It's not the same kind of election. Is this the BBC? Am I paying for this? The people's <laughs> aid voice. Am I paying a licence fee for this? <laughs> so whenever we talk about this election, Labour weren't there. We they were about there. The Conservatives but not What's your point? What's well. your point? This isn't a normal It's not my fault that Labour wasn't there. You may think it was not a normal by-election, but I won it. And I'm going to Parliament on Monday. And you're going, you're going to have to get used to it. You're going to have to get used to it. Do you expect that when the general election comes around, you can once again to the Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 The political class in Britain are in a state of panic about it, both the Conservatives and the because they know they've been grumbled. You see, inside the toxic bubble of the political and media class, which virtually to a man and woman supports the genocide against the people of Gaza, when you burst that bubble, you discover, actually, that amongst the general public, even in a country like Britain, for all its imperial faults, most people's sympathies are on the side of the victim and not the perpetrator. A dozen television cameras, which seems to indicate that people are interested, for good or ill, uh, in what I have to say. Said it was gate crashed. They weren't invited. You're kind of breaking up, but uh, let me infer the question, I hope, uh, properly. Uh, I can only do my best. Uh, I would never be the Palestinians alone. And it's a promise I've kept. And I'll be my final breath. Well, the day that last night, uh, I got 10,000 votes more than uh, In fact, I got more than the Labour Conservative Liberal Democrat and Reform candidates put together. So it was a thumping majority for my stance.
uh, and there are people like me uh, who will stand against it all over this country. Some will stand for a Party, the Workers Party of Britain. Many will stand as independents, including many significant uh, figures, like Andrew Feinstein, for example, a former South African member of Parliament, yeah. of the ANC, uh, a, a child of Holocaust survivors. He's standing against Bruce Dahmer himself, uh, a very, very substantial man. Uh, there are independents planning to stand against it all over the country because millions of traditional labour supporters have been completely disgusted by Starmer's unequivocal, his work, without qualification, his work, support of Israel. Congratulations, Joe! Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I, 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 I think the nature of tonight's proceedings have become slightly confused. Most people thought they were coming here to our victory party. But the television cameras have turned up to question the result of the election. They're going to have to suck it up. We won a thumping majority. In, no matter who is, in Rishi Sunak's words, outside Downing Street in a melodramatic pantomime just a few minutes ago, no matter who is alarmed about it, the people of Rochdale have spoken and they're sending me to Parliament on Monday. I was lucky or unlucky, maybe you were or weren't, uh, to watch the diminutive, diminished, degraded, and soon to be departing Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. Question not just our election victory, but more significantly, question the right of the British people peacefully to protest against the slaughter in Gaza. He deliberately tried to conflate protests and demonstrations of hundreds of thousands of people. Most of them not Muslims, by the way. He tried to make it a Muslim thing, but it isn't a Muslim thing. Hundreds of thousands of British people all over this country throughout the last four and a half months have been demonstrating their revulsion at the slaughter in Gaza and the support for it from the British government, the British Labour opposition and the vast majority of the British media. Hundreds of thousands have marched but millions share their revulsion. So, if you've come here to shill for little Rishi Suna or clunky Keir Starmer, you've come to the wrong place, you see, because both of these parties were comprehensively defeated here in We got more votes than Labour, Conservative, Liberal, reform put together hey. in the nature of our victory. It's a and people are going to have to come to terms with it because I'm not the kind of man who's easily intimidated. I'm not intimidated by hostile journalists and broadcasters. I'm not intimidated by cameras being pointed in my face. I'm afraid only of God, you see. I'm afraid only of God. And you will not trick me or force me into retreating from the platform on which I stood and for which I now have a mandate that I will take into the House of Commons 
on Monday. I'm not Jeremy Corbyn, you see. I don't turn the other cheek. If you slap me, I'll slap you back. Yeah. Yeah. Jeremy is a much more saintly figure than me. Maybe that's why he lost. But I didn't lose. I won. And we intend to follow up that victory with further victories. And they begin 12 weeks from now. I promised the people of Rochdale that we would try to clean the town hall clock. It was a Glasgow phrase, actually, I now realize, because a lady said to me, are you sure it's awfully high? <laughs> I meant it metaphorically. We're going to clean the town hall clock. We're going to clean out the town hall from the corrupt and incompetent Labour councillors. Yeah. Yeah. Labour out! Labour out! For 20 years in this town. They covered up the grooming scandal. They gutted the town centre. They placed a virtual demolition order on the Seven Sisters. They took away the market. They allowed them to take away the maternity facilities, the A&D facilities, even the lockup. It turns out not only can you not be born in Rochdale, not only can you not die in Rochdale, you can't even be locked up in Rochdale. You get taken to a jail in some other town. Well, that's not acceptable, you see, and if I'd been the Member of Parliament, that would never have happened. At least it would only have happened over my dead body, because that's the kind of Member of Parliament I intend to be. We intend to clean the town hall clock with our allies, in the Rochdale Community Alliance, and I hope with Mr. Tully. I mean, no wonder Rishi Sunak is alarmed about the election yesterday. He got whipped, not just by me, but by an independent candidate that nobody had ever heard. No wonder he's alarmed about the election result. But I hope that Mr. Tully, whom I again congratulate, for his splendid performance, coming in second, with uh, more votes than Labour, more votes than the Conservative. And I hope that Mr. Tully will join us in a grand alliance all over this borough so that we can completely defeat, eliminate, at the ballot box, on May the 2nd, every single Rochdale councillor up for re-election on the 2nd. will be a new broom that will sweep the town hall clean. And many people are already coming forward, saying they would like to be candidates. If amongst you there are others who would like to be candidates, please let us know with your CV, with your case for you being the candidate. And I believe we're going to do it, you know. The momentum that we've got and in other parts of the constituency, the momentum, momentum that David Tully has got. Between both of us, we could really sweep these people away out of the town hall, and heaven knows Rochdale needs it. And if we do it, and then that momentum, we hope, will take us all the way to victory in the general election here when it comes and whenever it comes. What we did yesterday is catching. That's why the politicians are so afraid of it. That's why their shills in the media are so hysterical about it. Because they know if what happened here happens elsewhere also, then big changes can be expected in British politics. I believe there are hundreds of constituencies where independent candidates and workers' party candidates can compete, will compete, 
will defeat particularly Labour, will defeat Labour or cause the defeat of Labour and thus change the whole arithmetic of the forthcoming general election. I said last night that Keir Starmer paid a price and will pay a price for deliberately, as a matter of deliberate policy, kicking in the teeth the most intense sacred feelings of millions of Labour's traditional supporters. You can't kick people in the teeth and expect them to vote for you. At least if someone credible stands up against you and asks people to vote for you instead. And I believe that that's what will happen. I just told Al Jazeera on a live link there to Doha that let's take just one constituency. There's a man called Andrew Feinstein in London who is the son of Holocaust survivors, who introduced the first bill in the Free South African Parliament about Holocaust commemoration. He was a member of Parliament in South Africa. He was in Nelson Mandela's government. He was in Nelson Mandela's party. And he's standing against Keir Starmer in Islington North. Now, wouldn't it be a good thing if Andrew Feinstein was swept into the House of Commons? Yeah! Of yeah! Come on, That's the kind of caliber of people that the independents, workers' candidates, and other smaller parties will be putting up at the general election. No wonder they're worried. No wonder Starmer's worried. No wonder Sunak is alarmed. Because a new political power was born here yesterday in Rochdale. Yeah. We are the pioneers. We are the second wave of Rochdale pioneers. We intend to pilot a Rochdale revival. And I'm glad, proud, that all of you are going to be a part of it. We'll make change here, starting on May the 2nd, then going on to the general election, and then four or five years after that. I'm like Cristiano Ronaldo, you see. I'm reaching the end of my career. But I've, I'm ready to sign a five-year contract with Rochdale Football Club. Thank you very much indeed for listening to me.